I'm hitting slides with my temper so Okay guys, so the last couple slides um, are just looking at a couple types of um, disorders that have to do with the immune system. So the first thing we'll look at uh, is HIV and then how that can progress to AIDS. HIV is human immunodeficiency virus. So immunodeficiency, you can imagine, has something to do with a deficient immune system, right? The immune system not working as well as it should. Um, HIV is spread through bodily fluids. So blood, uh, blood to blood contact, Years and years ago, transfusions, but not anymore. I, we, we scan the blood out that we get for transfusions. Um, IV drug use, right? If you're sharing needles um, with other IV drug users, you can get it that way. Um, sex, right? Via semen and vaginal secretions, or it's more common in anal sex because of tearing that occurs, um, typically with anal sex compared to vaginal sex, so it's spread easier via anal sex. Um, it can be spread in breast milk. It is not spread in saliva. You're not going to get it via kissing. You would literally have to drink gallons of someone's saliva, and that's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> you've, got, you've got bigger problems if you're doing that. Um, so you're not going to, unless you like had huge bleeding sores in your mouth, and they had huge bleeding sores in their mouth. Mm. Um, it's not going to be no mucus, no sneezing, no doorknobs, no sitting on a toilet. Like it, it does not get spread that way. It's not something that you need to fear walking around. Have protected sex and don't shoot up. You're good. <laughs> uh, you should do both of those anyway. FYI. Um, so what does HIV do? What's the problem? HIV infects your immune system. Okay, this is a virus. Remember, viruses enter our cells and replicate in them. It replicates in our immune system cells. So not only do you have an infection, but you have an infection that's destroying your immune system. Right? So it's like this double-edged sword. It happens to really, really like our helper T cells. Remember we call those CD4 cells? Because that's the T cell receptor they had, the CD4 T cell receptor. And remember, those were really important for then going on and stimulating all of our other immune system cells. The helper T cells are really important in the stimulation of the immune response. So the HIV virus goes into these helper T cells, right, these CD4 cells, and it replicates and then it kills the cell. Right? And it goes, all the other words, replicates, kills those cells. So we start to demolish our population of helper T cells. Um, initially, what we'll see when we start to destroy the CD4 cells is kind of like flu-like symptoms. Right? Headache, drowsiness, body aches, fever. Um, but then they typically rebound. You'll have a little bit of a rebound because your body says, oh, there's an infection, let me try and fight this. But the virus keeps going and it keeps destroying more and more and more CD4 cells. Um, and then eventually you start to get worse symptoms as the CD4 count drops really low. Um, a normal CD4 count is before, between 500 and 1500 cells per microliter or cubic microliter. So we start to see this number drop lower and lower and lower and lower as the HIV destroys more and more cells. If the CD4 count drops below 200 cells, Okay, then we say that the person has AIDS. So HIV can progress to AIDS. Okay, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Again, immunodeficiency. The immune system is deficient, severely deficient once it's progressed to AIDS. Um, and you don't actually die from AIDS. Okay, AIDS is not actually going to kill you. But AIDS completely destroys your immune system. So your immune system can't protect you against that. Um, so you end up dying because of some sort of an opportunistic infection or cancer. Okay, so you don't have the ability to fight infections. Um, cancers like Kaposi's sarcoma is a cancer that's very common or, or much more common in HIV patients. Um, but we typically will have some sort of an infection that develops and then the patient ends up succumbing to that. And the other thing we'll talk about is lupus. There's actually multiple types of lupus, but when we say lupus, we're typically referring to SLE, uh, systemic lupus erythematosus. So SLE, or just lupus, is the most common type of lupus. Um, this is chronic, it's really widespread. Um, when we look at it at, at lupus, it's one of these things that kind of worsens 
then it, it kind of waxes and wanes. It'll get worse and then it'll kind of ease up a little bit. It'll get worse and then it'll ease up a little bit. And it can cause problems all over the body. Um, lupus is what we call an autoimmune disorder. What does auto mean? Self. So you make auto antibodies. You make antibodies against yourself. So something goes wrong um, and your immune system starts fighting yourself. So the antibodies that you're making start going and finding your antigens, of course, because they're your normal antigens. Like, of course, they're going to be all over your body. And you start forming these little complexes all over the place. And of course, we, we cause inflammation, right? Like when you have an antibody that goes and finds this antigen, you bring a bunch of blood to the area. We increase permeability, right? There's a lot of inflammation that occurs because that's supposed to protect you. But now you're causing inflammation all over the place when there's not really a problem. So you have really widespread inflammation. Um, again, this is present all over the place. Um, so we see symptoms really everywhere, like skin, joints, and then I say organs. Like that narrows it down, right? Organs. But really, you can see kidneys and the blood vessels, the liver. You can see this um, all over the place. So some things that are kind of key, um, we see a butterfly rash really commonly on the face. So skin symptoms are really common. Um, but this little like butterfly shaped rash, like redness that radiates out in like little wings across the cheeks, like this, like a butterfly, um, is very, very common with lupus. Pain, obviously, because of all of the inflammation that's occurring, pain is chronic um, and kind of hard to deal with. And then ultimately organ failure. And again, this could be kidneys, um, this could be an issue with vessels, this could be any number of organs, depending on the person. Um, lupus is not contagious. And we're actually not exactly positive what causes it. There's kind of a combination of genetic factors, um, just individual factors with, with you and your genetics, and then also the environment that can impact it. We know way more women get it than men. So something with female physiology uh, makes females way more prone to lupus than men are. Um, we've also associated it with families, so some genetic or inheritable component. And then also with the Epstein-Barr virus. There's some correlation of people who come in contact with the Epstein-Barr virus um, developing lupus later. So something there. Um, there's no cure for it. Again, this is chronic. The way that we treat lupus is, is kind of threefold. One, we try and tell patients to avoid triggers because certain things trigger worsening of symptoms. Sun is one that's really bad for a lot of people. Alcohol, um, it just depends on the person. But whatever those triggers are, whatever the things are that set off um, your, your reactions, your inflammatory responses, you need to avoid those triggers. So lots of lifestyle changes. Um, we do corticosteroids. Corticosteroids help with the inflammation. Long-term corticosteroids are kind of dangerous for lots of different reasons, uh, but they do help with the inflammation. And remember that chronic corticosteroids decrease your immune system. So your immune system is a bad guy in this case. So it's good to have that immunosuppression. Um, we also give actual immunosuppressants. So other things to try and decrease the effectiveness of your immune system, since that's your immune system that's actually um, fighting itself. Here, this is showing you the butterfly rash. Okay, so you can see like the wings stretching across the cheeks. Um, and this is what Kaposi sarcoma looks like. So this is an, um, an AIDS patient. And again, Kaposi sarcoma is, is one of the common things that cancers that will develop um, in AIDS patients kind of towards the end. Um, and those are really characteristic skin lesions that you see. All right, guys, that's lymphatic. Sweet, we made it.